Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, step right up and marvel as I present to you the most magnificent, melodious, and dare I say magical instrument ever invented. Re-entrant or high G tuned ukulele. Now, where most string instruments are tuned from the lowest string to the highest string, we tune from a high string, then low, and up. And this gives us a very unique sort of sound that some folks find limiting, but I think presents a whole new range of possibilities. And I'm going to show you five things that this little instrument can do that other instruments can only dream of. Regardless of what tuning you play on this instrument, there's one thing that we are constantly fighting as ukulele players, and that is the sustain monster, trying to get our notes to ring out longer. It's just very hard on a nylon stringed short scale instrument, but us re-entrant tuned players have a secret weapon in our back pocket called Campanella. And this means little bells, and it is a style that we take from Baroque and classical guitar that utilizes the high G string to move some of the notes so that we can place them on other strings versus where they would rather be and let the previous note ring out a little bit longer. Now the concept here is very simple. We want to avoid two consecutive notes on the same string. If we think about a regular C major scale, we might play a fingering like this. which is great, but with Campanella techniques, we could play a fingering like this. And hear how all of those notes just ring out a little bit longer and give us this harp-like effect. Now I use this myself in the beginning of Roy Smack's Magic Ukulele Waltz, my arrangement of it, not how Roy played it. Because I just love the openness of the sound of walking up that C major lick. Now, if you want to learn more about this style, I'm not the person for you. You should check out Samantha Muir, who is one of the finest classical uke players out there and has many great tutorials on how to play in Campanella style. And I'll link to a couple of her videos down below so you can dive further into this. Now let's look at magic trick number two. Many of us have both high G and low G tuned ukes because they both have their advantages and disadvantages, but I'm curious, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments. One of the only other re-entry tuned instruments around these days is the five string banjo. And that means that we can take some banjo styles and adapt them to uke. One of my favorites is claw hammer banjo, which utilizes a drone of the high G string. Now the concept's rather simple. If you put down your G major chord, we can just do a two nice brushes down like this and then pluck the G and it sounds like this. Try that with me. Just coming down with my fingernails. And as you get further along in this style, you can start adding in the melody. If you want to learn more about this, I'll link below to an entire playlist of videos that I have to get you started in claw hammer style. High G uke has a special ability that most instruments do not have, which is the ability to play the same exact note in the same exact octave at the same time. You might ask yourself why you would want to do this, but the reality is if you play high G uke, you've been doing this the entire time you've played the instrument. If you put down an F major chord, you're playing an A in the same octave on the two outer strings. We hear these as the same note, but if we pluck them together, hear that they fight each other just a little bit. It's just physics. They're vibrating a little bit different than each other. And this gives what's called a chorusing effect. And you might wonder why you would want to play two of the same notes at the same time. But if you think of an instrument such as mandolin that has two strings of the same pitch on it or 12 string guitar, they also have this chorusing effect. It's just a different sound that you could play with. But if you are cognizant of these chords that you are playing with these doubled notes in them, they can really help bring out the charm of high G. You got F has this, our G has this. Here's a G and a G. Our A has this. Our D major has this. And that means that all these movable positions also have it. So if you want to approximate the sound of say, a mandolin and get that chorusing effect, you can use this to your advantage. Now, I'll also note that sometimes this can be to your detriment because we don't want our instruments to sound 
out of tune. So there's times when you'll want to get rid of that effect. If we take that F major chord and put our pinky on the third fret of the C string, we remove the chorusing effect. So this is just a little bit of flavor that you can throw into a song if you want to have a different sort of sound. One of my absolute favorite techniques that can only be done on high G uke is the split stroke. Now, if you're familiar with George Formby, you probably know what a split stroke is, but George Harrison also used this a lot in his uke playing, and many other players such as Roy Smack and Cliff Edwards also did variations of the split stroke. And the concept is that we're taking these two outer strings that are so close to each other and creating moving melodies between them by using a very specific strumming pattern. So we can get something like this. And the most basic split stroke is a strumming pattern like this. We would have down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. And those groupings of the double downs, all the first downs will just be bouncing off of the G string. So we really get down, up, bounce, down, up, bounce, down, up. If we put down a C major chord and try that nice and slowly, it sounds like this. Down, up, down, down, up, bounce, down, up. This takes quite a while to get your hands around and there are infinite possibilities as how you can arrange this into a song and use different strumming patterns. But the reason that I love this so much are the other applications. You can play a waltz like this or you can even play a samba. And if you want to learn how to take this and play it in other ways or learn how to play like George Formby, I'm going to link to my split stroke playlist down below if you want to dive into this style. I think it's truly one of the most unique and fascinating things that we can do with high G uke. This last little bit, this is why I play high G uke. And that's for the availability of chord voicings they are nearly impossible on any other instrument. And also that we can play the same exact chord in multiple different ways because of the high G tuning. Now what's a chord voicing? A chord itself is just a group of notes. It's a musical concept. So the C that we always play, C, E, G, that's our C chord. This is also a C chord, a C chord, C chord, C chord, C chord. There's so many different ways that we can play a C major chord. And how we voice it is how we lay out those notes on the fingerboard. So let's look at a C seventh chord. Let's lay across the third fret as a bar, and then we'll put our middle finger down on the fourth fret of our C string. This is a C seventh chord, different voicing that you might be familiar with. Now what's so cool to me about this is that I can play these same exact notes, E, G, B flat, C, in that same exact order in four different ways on this instrument. E, G, B flat, C. I can arrange it like this. But do these sound the same? No, because I'm putting now the flat seven in that upper voice, despite the notes. If we write them down on the staff being identical in both those chords, they sound radically different because of the way that we voice it. But we can also use our high G string to voice this chord, which takes this and gives it a more open sound because we're using an open string, open four, six, three. And if you're on soprano, you can take this even further and play it like this, but it's still the same chord. They're all the same. All the same notes in the same order, but arranged differently on our fingerboard, giving us different sounds. And if you wanna hear this in action, check out my arrangement of Moonlight in Vermont, which gives a good perspective on how you can use these odd voicings up and down the fingerboard to get voice leading that you might not otherwise be able to find. If you would like to learn more about music and playing ukulele, join me over on the Tim Ann's Magic Ukulele Club, my learning platform that includes access to my George Formby course, my claw hammer course, a host of jazz standards using all of these chord voicings that we've been talking about with new lessons every single week, live streams, PDFs, and all that jazz. I'll see y'all over there.